Hello, and welcome back to the Proverbs 31 Ministries Morning Show. My name is Nicole Moses. I'm here with my coworker and friend, Maddie Vincent. Maddie, how are you today? Hi, Nicole. I'm doing so well, and I'm so glad to be back here with you, Nicole. And I'm also glad to be back here on Facebook Live with you. And Nicole, guess what? What? Daylight savings time is right around the corner. Yay! Oh, I'm so excited. We're turning the corner into spring. It's almost March. And those long, dark days, guys, I have great news. There is only 23 more days till daylight savings. I can't wait. I love that. I was just talking to a friend recently, and she said, if you're ever feeling in a funk, um maybe you just need something to look forward to so if you needed something to look forward to today 23 days until daylight savings time um but Nicole what are you looking forward to oh one of my favorite things about spring this sounds so cheesy but I love outdoor dining I love sitting on a patio at a restaurant with my friends and just staying for as long as possible it's one of my favorite things but Maddie what are you looking forward to well, I am looking forward to the daffodils in my backyard to start popping up. I have a few already, but I can't wait for some more. You guys let us know what you are looking forward to in the comments. We cannot wait to hear. Yes, we have your comments right here. And it's so fun seeing you all pop in there. Um, well, I think it's clear that for most of us, dark days are really hard. And in all honesty, it feels like it's been more than just some dark days, but it's felt like it's been a lot, a dark few years as well. Yeah, I think just between the pandemic and things that are happening around the world, um, it can just feel so overwhelming. I know that I woke up this morning and I was just reading about everything that's happening in the Ukraine. And I just felt a really big sense of overwhelm. But I also think that there was so much sovereignty in the Lord to have us plan what this show was going to be so many months ago, um, because we have a special guest today. Her name is Megan Ryan. Um, she is going to teach us how we can pray scripture. Um, and so I'm so excited. Megan, welcome to the morning show. Hey, friends. Thanks for having me. Megan, we're so excited that you're here. We love Megan. She's one of our favorite people. Will you tell us a little bit about you and what you do here at Proverbs 31 Ministries? Yeah, of course. So I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, but I'm originally from Florida and really, really proud of it. Um, I am a professional copywriter here at Proverbs 31, which basically means I write marketing content, which can be anything from an email y'all might get to some of the things on our website and to free resources that we give you guys that are hopefully encouraging you. And lately I've really been enjoying a, a little bit of longer days. Like you guys were talking about, the sun was out until six 30 in Charlotte last night, which was a big deal considering it's been getting dark at five and, um, cooking some half baked harvest recipes. I don't know how many of you know who that is, but go find her on Instagram. Cause I just every week want to try something that she's making. Megan, we're just so glad that you're here. And today we're tackling kind of a tough topic. It's about prayer. And I know for me, there are many times that I have felt like there are just, I'm in the midst of uncertain times. The circumstances I'm facing are too big and prayer is not the first place that I go, but I would love to know why is prayer so important in our lives? Um, there are a couple of verses that talk about, there's a lot of verses that talk about prayer, but two that I've been looking at lately is first John five fourteen, And that basically tells us when we pray, God actually hears us. We're not praying to the sky or to someone who's not listening. Um, God actually listens to our prayers, which just really encourages me, um, that he cares. And also in Mark eleven twenty two, 22, we see that God asks us to pray and pray, prayer does change things. Um, and so Nicole, I'm kind of like you, it's not really my first response when something big is going on in my life or in the world. Um, but I'm learning that prayer does not actually have to be my last resort. It can be the first thing I turn to in those moments where I feel like they're really hard and I don't know what else to do. I love that, that prayer doesn't have to be a last resort, but it can be the very first thing that we go to. Um, it's such a good reminder. And I some I think sometimes it does feel like we 
we shouldn't just pray. We need to do lots of things, but prayer could actually be the catalyst for so many other things to be able to happen and help. Um, and I think that a good word to describe what we feel so often when things around us are crumbling, when the world feels out of control is just overwhelm. Um, Megan, how have you dealt with the overwhelm in your life? And yeah. does prayer help with that? It really does. And like I said before, it, it, I don't know why it takes me so long to get there, but overwhelmed would be a word I've just would describe how I felt the last couple of weeks. And I'm trying to memorize this first. I'm going to try to say it without reading my paper. Um, it's out of Psalm 61 verses one and two. And it says, when, uh, out of my heart, I cry out to you, Lord, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And so what I've been practicing doing is turning verses like that into a prayer. And so for example, God, your word says, when my heart is overwhelmed, you will lead me to yourself, the rock that is higher than me. You hear me every time I cry out in this situation that I'm facing, and you know every detail I cannot see. When I don't know where else to go, I can go to you. I surrender the feelings that want to overtake me today and choose to put my trust in you as my rock. Amen. I love that. I love the idea of praying scripture. I think there's so many times that we're facing something so big and so hard that even sometimes just out of the exhaustion of dealing with it all, there's just no words that come to mind. And I love that God has given us words to pray. We, we don't have to come up with our own. So I think that is so powerful. Megan, something that we see very often um, in the world of social media, but kind of all over in our comments or direct messages, um, is people are really battling anxiety these days. I am as well. I'm one of those people. I have faced it in bigger ways, in hard situations in my life, but I also do face it in my day-to-day -day life as well. Um, and so I would love to know what is something we can pray when we are feeling anxious, whether it's about the world, what's going on around us, or even just our own lives or circumstances. Yeah, thankfully the Bible has a lot of verses um, about being anxious, but one in particular that I've looked to lately is 1 Peter 5, 7, which says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And what a comfort to know that the Lord cares about our anxious thoughts and our anxious feelings and our anxious emotions. And so one way we can turn that into a prayer is something like this. God, I come to you in the middle of my anxiousness today and ask for your comfort. You alone bring peace in the middle of situations that feel anything but peaceful. I ask you to replace my anxious thoughts with your peace and help me to rest in knowing that you care about me and what I'm going through. These are just so good. And I know that you who are watching this are going to want a copy of the prayers that Megan is praying. And we actually put this into a resource for you. It's called When Nothing Feels Like It Can Help. And it actually contains six prayers that are based off of scripture that you can pray in the hard moments. Um, that is for free on our website. We're going to drop a link in the comments so that you can go ahead and access it. You can print out the document, maybe put it in the back of your Bible, maybe tape it on your bathroom mirror. Um, and I think that it will just be so helpful when you start feeling overwhelmed to have the words to pray. Well, Megan, we can't go until we talk about one last thing. And I think this is a big one. Um, when we are facing situations kind of like today um, with everything that's happening in Ukraine, and it feels like there's nothing that we can do except watch. And that is really hard. I think it fills us with a lot of fear. I feel that today personally. Um, and so I would love to ask you, when we face situations like this, does prayer actually change anything? Yeah. And I think, uh, like I said at the beginning, God's word is very clear. Jesus says, ask um, and pray, ask for your daily bread. He says that in the Lord's prayer in Matthew. And I do think that prayer is the first thing we can do. It is a step of action. It doesn't have to be the only step we take. And I think even praying for wisdom on what are the other steps we can take practically, whether that's getting involved in an organization in some way or um, organizing some sort of fundraiser or anything like that. We can ask the Lord not only to intervene and move, but we can also ask him for wisdom. And so Today, it kind of is one of those days where it just feels like the world is on fire and everywhere we turn, there's something 
tragic happening on the news. And even with Ukraine, like Maddie said, we didn't know when we wrote these prayers or we uh, started prepping for this show this morning, that that was what was going to be going on. And the Lord, the Lord did know, and we can have confidence in that when we pray his word to him, that he is moving. Um, and so one of the verses that I'm specifically looking at today is Psalm 121 verses one and two. I lift my eyes up to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And God, we do need your help today. The world around us looks like it's on fire, but help us to lift our eyes to you. You are the God who helps. You created the heavens and the earth. You know what is behind and what is ahead. You alone can save us from whatever we're facing. And even when we don't have the words to pray, we can come ask you for help and you will move. Thank you for being our help in time of need. Wow, I love the just beautiful tension of a sovereign God who knows all things, but also listens and responds to our prayers. Um, I just think it's so vitally important in these days that we do pray and we do speak God's truth over ourselves and our friends and our family and the world and that we pray scripture. Um, It just helps us declare that God is still on the throne um, and we know that his word is true and trustworthy. Megan, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for sharing these prayers with us. Um, don't forget, if you want a copy of them, you can get them for free on our website. Um, but Megan, would you pray over all of us before we end so that we can go out and live these truths today, um, but also every day? Yes, of course. Um, God, first and foremost, we just thank you that you are still on the throne. Um, And even as we watch um, not only our brothers and sisters in Christ in Ukraine, but even all those who don't know you face just one of the most scary and uncertain times that you are still there and you are still present. And God, we pray your comfort over people there, Lord. We pray that you would intervene, that you would give leaders wisdom um, and that you would just remind each of us that you are still in control. Um, We pray and thank you that even when we can't see you or even when we can't feel you, when we feel discouraged or we feel um, like there's nothing we can do, God, that you are a God who can move. And so I pray you would give each of us wisdom today, how to respond, that your spirit would prompt us to pray um, and that we would just trust that you are still working and you are still moving. And we pray all this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Megan, thank you for being here today. Thank you for sharing all your wisdom. Friend, I hope that you are leaving here today feeling a little bit more equipped with the truth that we all need. Don't forget to grab the link for these prayers and many more in the comments. And thank you for joining us today. Don't forget that we are here every other Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. We will be back on March 10th and we're going to share three Bible study basics. It's going to be so great and we can't wait to see you then. Bye friend. Bye.